Welcome to Yelling at Birds. I'm recording this on a Sunday. Ooh, let's fix this. So, happy Sunday night to everybody. Uh, otherwise, happy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or I guess never, depending on uh, when you decide to listen. Never. Um, as we head into another week, another week, I wanted to try something new here. Uh, I don't necessarily have a topic that I'm like aching to cover right now, um, but I thought it would just be time to try out some video. So as I'm recording this, I'm also recording myself like a real fucking pro with my iPhone perched in a tumbler glass. So phone in a cup, brought to you by the same fine folks who brought you ball in a cup. Phone in a cup, put your phone in a cup. Uh, I have this disclaimer to read, makers of phone in a cup would like to remind you to rem remove all liquids from your cup before using their product. Their product is also just cups. So I'm, I'm addressing two people right now, the audio, just the straight podcast listeners, and then uh, whoever happens to see this video on wherever the hell I decide to put it, YouTube, Patreon, uh, we're figuring this out. We're just, we're just trying to try new things. Um, so I have my, if you're just, if you're just watching the video, I have my, basically my script, my rundown on my computer here. So, um, I don't have all this in my head. I'm not that smart. Um, so I need to reference this page and try, try not to screw up, but, but I'll just get into it. So I know I've briefly touched on this in past episodes, or at least I thought I did, but, uh, a big reason for me starting this podcast was to uh, help me express myself in my recovery. Uh, I surpassed one year of sobriety mid-month in October, and uh, this past October, this past month, and well, and I'm well beyond the uh, rose-colored glasses phase. For those of you who have uh, successfully evaded alcohol and or drug addiction or any other addiction in your life, the Rose colored glasses stage is is basically when you're you're you've made that healthy choice and you're getting your energy back. It feels like everything's magical. You're smelling smells again. You're tasting tastes. You're feeling feelings. Um, you feel over energized and extremely happy and healthy. And you wonder why you had ever ever picked up the bottle in the first place. This is a time when it feels like pure optimism is flowing through your veins. But it, and, and it's an incredible, incredible time. And you should enjoy the hell out of it while it's there. And I know, so this, I mean, it's not strictly limited to changing unhealthy behaviors. I mean, you go through the same type of phase um, if you're exercising, uh, once you've gotten out of a very bad, re toxic relationship, or take any other positive control in your life. Uh, it's the honeymoon phase between you and your good choices. And then you hit the plateau. And that's where I was uh, for the last month or maybe more. And it had nothing to do with, with people around me, my capabilities, or any, any other type of support in my life. It's just when the natural momentum of your good choice begins to slow down, bringing you back down to earth where everything goes back to normal and maybe where all of the reasons you felt the need to escape in the first place come back to you. This is weird. Look at that. I'm recording on that. For those of you just listening and not watching the video, what I just did wouldn't make sense. Um, so, it's, yeah, the natural momentum of your good choice begins to slow down. So, everything goes back to normal and maybe where, um, so the reasons that you felt the need to escape come back to you, uh, they're showing their, themselves again. I mean, you you made that choice for a reason. Maybe it was fun, maybe, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, the world seemed like it was too much and it was easier to cope with everything when you weren't fully there. But what's different now when you get past that rose-tinted or rose-colored glasses stage is that, you know, if you're determined in your sobriety or your new life choices. Um, when reality starts crashing down on you again, none of the easy avenues of escape are there anymore. And now it's up to you to find the motivation or 
to create the action that breeds the motivation to keep the train running down the tracks. One, uh, one very wise gentleman in one of the meetings that I go to called this stage sober, which was an acronym for son of a bitch, everything's real. And that's what it feels like. I love it. I mean, it's easy to get frustrated or thrown off course when this period comes up. It seems like everything becomes that much harder. But I really think that this is how hard it is or can be for anyone. It just feels harder now because we don't have our dark little bottles to crawl into. Responsibility can feel unbearable when you're no longer actively avoiding it. Um, or when you're used to, yeah, when you're used to just avoiding it 24-7. Before, life was messy and you didn't care because you weren't the one cleaning it up. Uh, now, it's, now it's just as messy as it always is, plus you have all those other little mess messes that you piled up over time. Because the ones that you made when you were hurting yourself, um, avoiding responsibilities, those messes don't just go away. Another gem I heard from an online meeting uh, helped me while I was in this phase, in this son of a bitch, everything's real phase. And I mean, it wasn't really, it wasn't really a saying or an acronym, but just a suggestion from the group moderator. Uh, and these are uh, smart recovery meetings which are awesome. I mean, they're great. Um, scientific, I mean, well, it's not like it's free and they don't ask anything of you and it just feels like it's more of a camaraderie and a community. And it's just a nice place to go and uh, hear people with similar stories, um, of similar stories that, how the hell do I say that? It's nice to be around people with, with shared experiences. Um, so it wasn't really a saying, but it was just good advice for anyone. And um, it was just to be gentle with yourself. We can be hard on people as we figure this whole thing out. And the people we tend to be the hardest on are ourselves. People who are recovering from an, ad an addiction or from being sucked into any other unhealthy way of living, uh, mentally or physically, really do have to be gentle with themselves as they relearn to navigate life again without that crutch of unhealthy escapism. Everything does seem a little harder because you're not used to coping with the regular struggles of life in a complete and healthy way. You feel, you may feel a little disoriented and you feel left behind, especially if you have the benefit of being surrounded by a supportive group of people that didn't exactly go, go through what you went through. It's kind of like having a baseline or a test group. Um, no matter what, uh, other peers might, they may seem light years, of he light years ahead of you, no matter how supportive they are. Um, nonetheless, this is when you need to, you really do need to be the most gentle with yourself as you put yourself back together again. I think this is what I was trying to express in my last episode. Uh, for those of you just watching video, you'll have to go back to uh, episode 28. I kind of talked about um, building kind of talked about how how much the world can be sometimes and I was kind of going through a little bit of um, feeling like the world was a lot and I was frustrated because I felt like I wasn't making as much progress as I felt like I could um, and a lot of that came out in the episode and I didn't really realize it at the time um, but that's essentially what I was trying to express in that episode um, going through the whole uh, sober phase is really when you need to start um, you need to focus on what kind of life you want what kind of life you want to have and then start actively making little changes day by day to bring that life into reality it's truly when you do create the action that breeds motivation um, another note from the last episode something that uh, a friend of mine uh, reached out after she heard, heard the episode. Uh, looking back, I do believe that that's what I was trying to express um, without even realizing it, that the world was feeling big. And without knowing it, I was uh, kind of pushing myself through uh, maybe the last membrane of quote unquote, uh, the sober or real phase. 
and it must have came off like I was struggling, and maybe I was and didn't really realize it. But upon listening to it, a friend reached out to lend her support, and that was a beautiful thing to do. So I wanted to thank Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. You, you are. You're, you're a wonderful human being. And while we may not be close in proximity or um, spending, in spending time in spending time together terms, um, I think we are close in support for one another. And what you offered me, I offer, I offer to you. If the world feels like it's too much, you can always reach out. And I appreciate the hell out of you. So just to wrap up that last point of the uh, son of a bitch, everything's real phase and being gentle, that goes for all of you. Um, I, may, I may be repeating myself here and I'm not, I don't really care about that because I feel it to be true, but life isn't a competition. You won't die a greater death by pretending to be tough your entire life. So be gentle and understanding with yourself and afford others the same treatment. There's no user manual for life. Only a rough agreement on what we should be doing, which is just bound to change over time. We are, we're living and taking part in a system of our own creation. And uh, most of what we do or why we do it aren't things that really exist in the natural world. We are, I've kind of had that feeling that, I mean, it's come up that we're basically outpacing our evolution. And that's not an easy thing for our minds to keep pace with um, in a healthy way. So I think we're all doing the best we can, trying to figure it out as we go along. Um, so as the quote goes, goes, that's not a word. As the quote goes, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Side note, maybe way off topic, but not off topic, maybe. But so today I was watching American History X and I had a thought of, I was thinking about this episode and uh, the world feeling like it was too much or you know, people that go through that. And I don't know that the world really feels like it's too much for those, for those out there who, who feel or those with empathy. I know it may seem like it as we have to hide ourselves inside every now and then, um, but we do that to get our energy back again, to go out there and continue knowing full well what's out there waiting for us. And those don't strike me as the actions of someone cowering in the face of too much. Watching that movie, my thought was that who the world is too much for are those who act with hate. Um, the racist, the sexist, the xenophobic, and the like. I just saw it, um, I mean, and it's dramatized because it's, it's a movie, but still. They use their hate to shrink the world down to the size and scope that they feel safe. Down to the size and scope that they feel safe around um, and they circle themselves with people they feel won't challenge them. So they can live their days out in a secure and monotonous haven. And this kind of made me feel sad for them. It's all just driven by their own extreme insecurity and fear and there's just a ton that they're just gonna miss out on. And what kind of life is that? So let's not live that life. Live your life, as Rihanna would say, the great Rihanna. I think that was Rihanna. And those of you that feel left behind, forgotten, or unwanted, whilst, while still participating and still being here with all of us today, uh, you are the brave ones, and I admire the hell out of you. But that's all I have for you this week. I'm gonna play around with this video a little bit. Nothing weird, just upload it and see where I wanna post it and what to do with it. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. And thank you for giving me your attention. And I appreciate the hell out of you, all of you. I'll be, the, the, I'll be playing the video with, of this episode, so try giving it a look if you can. Um, so you can see my, me and my unshowered, messy, not really messy hair, but unshowered, messy haired Sunday glory. Uh, if you 
And if you have a story about your recovery and what phase you might be in or feel you might be in and want to talk about it um, that you'd like me to share, so please shoot me a message on, I'd say, uh, the Yelling at Birds podcast on Facebook. Shoot a message, uh, find that page, uh, message me, tell me about your story, um, see if it's something that you'd want to talk about on the podcast or want me to mention on the podcast. And I'm also playing around on Patreon. So I've sent some, I've set up some reward levels, each with, with added benefits if you would like to be more involved in supporting what I do and helping me expand and expanding with me. Um, just find me out. Uh, so it's yelling at birds on, Patre on patreon.com. But overall, most of all, please, please, please be kind to yourself. Continue growing, continue learning, and have a goddamn amazing week. Stay cool, kids.